a leak that talks about Death Stranding in Super Smash Brothers, and Sabi has new leak comments. What's happening, my block buddies, and welcome to a brand new episode of Block Content's Leak Speak. My name is Callum, and this is going to be your content for today. We get to talk about two different very special things, one of which is Sabi, yes, a person that has a lot of inside information, actually talking a whole lot more about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 and to Extension Smash, muffled words about Platinum Games and some wonderful 101 stuff, and of course the general league sphere and stuff that might be happening in 2020 and stuff within Nintendo that might not be happening this year, but will be shelved until next year. So all of that is extremely interesting. And we also received this very fun, anonymous Super Smash Bros. Ultimate League that talks a little bit about Death Stranding and potentially a Death Stranding crossover with Super Smash Bros. So I wanted to take the time to talk about all of that together with you guys. I'm very excited and I've been answering many of you guys' questions about Smash and new fighters in our show question blocks where I answer your questions. You know, what do I think of your favorite game? How do you start making content on YouTube? Well, whatever you can think of, send your question through to blockcontentmail at gmail.com and I will answer your question live on the show in our next Question Blocked episode, which is coming up real soon. And here's a brand new giveaway, super awesome, these Mario surprise capsules. Any Mario item, a Yoshi, a character, could be inside, and I leave them closed so you can find out what's inside when you win. I'm giving away four of these, so remember to like this video, subscribe to Blocked Content right now, and comment down below why you should win one of these giveaways. All right, guys, let's get into the main topic of today. And very first, I wanted to talk about this super strange Sabi news, right? So for those of you guys who don't know, Sabi at new underscore Wabi Sabi on Twitter actually talks about a whole lot of Nintendo related content. And sometimes like we're discussing today, a little bit outside of that realm and has in the past kind of talked about Super Smash Brothers leagues and now is talking about Wii U ports saying, you know, about Wii U ports. I'm not exactly sure uh, when it's going to be close to the direct. I just know that some ports are on the way. I'd expect at least one of them though, Maybe some other people know that, as do know some people's specific reveals already. So the idea here is that reveals from the Wii U era, so potentially Pikmin 3, or maybe a game like Super Mario 3D World, which a lot of people have been waiting for to get you know, ported big time to the Switch with maybe even new content added to it. People have been talking about a playable Daisy, maybe even finally a playable Waluigi and Wario in that kind of a game. So that would have been really incredible. And Sabi basically goes on to say Nintendo is very weird with how they handle their recent ports, such as with, you know, new Super Mario Bros. U being held off for months, which was already finished, and how Metroid Prime Trilogy has been finished yet, held on for a long time. So yes, Nintendo are kind of waiting for the perfect month to release these things in. We always see that with movie schedules as well, where it's like, oh, horror movies really do well in this October month because, you know, that's Halloween. Oh, and these big blockbuster movies do great over the summer because everyone's free to watch a big blockbuster movie. Now, with games, it's sort of the same field where they probably know that Mario games sell really well in these certain months and that Metroid games, you know, preferably sell well in other kinds of months. So that's probably why they space them out very specifically even though they've already been finished. And with these ports, it's even easier because technically they have already been completely finished. They just need to be ported over. And that is, you know, compared to making a brand new game, pretty darn easy. So also the news about Paper Mario, you know, absolutely no skepticism, be hype about a new Paper Mario game and Breath of the Wild 2 taking longer than anticipated. And now following up on those thoughts, Sabi actually dropped a picture of the champion's armor, which I think is really cool. It's a me costume that is coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and is actually a pre-order bonus that you get for the second fighter's pass. So we don't know what characters are in there yet. We just know this costume and a lot of people are actually very excited about that. I myself am kind of in the middle. I do like it, but I feel like there could have been a lot more awesome extras there. I mean, if it was Cuphead or something like that, I feel like a lot more people would have been getting the pass now. Maybe switch those things around. So, you know, give that Legend of Zelda skin to people that have bought Byleth and maybe give a brand new Cuphead character skin to people that are buying a new Fighter's Pass. That way it will feel very special. So to me, that was already a weird choice. And then Sabi goes on to say something about Platinum Games, which is 
muffled words about Platinum and Wonderful 101 in the distance. And since that happened, a lot of news outlets have begun reporting. Yes, the Wonderful 101 creators are actually starting a Kickstarter. They actually already found an account that is a Platinum Games account that has just been created. So it seems like this is really going to happen. A basic Nintendo property, which is Wonderful 101, right? It only appeared on the Wii U and, you know, maybe is even going to get ported to the Switch. Well, now it seems like they're basically taking their IP in their own hands and possibly even coming to different consoles like PlayStation or Xbox. That is already pretty crazy, even if you think about the fact that Bayonetta, which was, you know, not that exclusive, now for Bayonetta 2 was a Nintendo exclusive, and 3 even so. So to me, that feels like they're probably getting their own IP back again, and if they're doing this purely on their own through a Kickstarter, that probably means that Wonderful 102, or whatever the sequel is going to be called, will not be primarily on a Nintendo system that will be a multi-platformer. So to me, it is a very fun game. I love the Wonderful 101 for all the quirks and the fun gameplay that it had. You know, all the forms that you can, you know, snap into, I thought was very, very genius. So to see this evolve in a new way, I feel like Platinum Games is a tough studio to kind of let people down. They do pretty great work overall, and I think the people behind the scenes are pretty funny too. And then actually Sabi goes on to say this, for those who are seeing Liam Robertson, etc., saying that Wonderful 101 is coming to Switch, PS4, and maybe other platforms, I'm not quite sure of, that's exactly correct. My tweet yesterday wasn't about 101 being ported just to Switch. So, yes, confirmation here that we're not talking about just getting a port of Wonderful 101, but maybe we are getting a port to Switch and then also to all these other consoles and maybe even, you know, to build on that same hype of people, you know, rediscovering the game or discovering it for the first time, being like, oh, and by the way, we are making a sequel and now that everyone's playing that game, maybe you'd want to donate to our Kickstarter because that's the way that you are going to be a part of it and actually going to get involved into creating this game. And if you don't, well, we'll probably not be able to make the game, so we really need the user's input here. So all of that to me is extremely exciting. The whole fact that, you know, people are actually working together to be able to create a game like that to me is very fun and it's a very, you know, new age kind of idea. And that's what I really love about the fact that, you know, these games are for the players. If you are going to kickstart a game like Wonderful 101 sequel, then it's probably going to include all the elements that, you know, the gamers love that played the first game. So it's going to include characters, but it's going to expand on that. It's going to include the same gameplay and people will actually be able to vote on different tiers on Kickstarter, things like that. So maybe there's a certain amount of money that they have to reach for it to add co-op mode or something like that. And those things I really love about Kickstarter because the sky's the limit. I mean, look at ukulele and what, you know, basically the users did for that game. They made it so huge and even though it didn't live up to a lot of people's expectations because of course as the money grew the expectations grew with that gradually i thought the game was very solid and actually had a lot of charm to it and yeah they really outdid themselves with the latest game you know the game where it's basically a tropical freeze kind of style game that doesn't really reflect what they were trying to do in the first place but yeah the ip sort of works now, I really wanted to get into another piece of information that has been sent through the Discord of Block Content. You can actually visit the Discord if you look at it in the description of this video. So click on that link and become a part of our family. It's a lot of fun in our Discord, but sometimes some stuff gets there that really has no place to be talked about. But in this video, I just wanted to talk about the possibility because a lot of people have been asking me, do you think it's at all possible that content from Death Stranding will be in Super Smash Brothers? And to me, the idea here is a solid one because yes, Sakurai and Hideo Kojima are very good close personal friends and they've worked together in the past before and especially on Super Smash Bros. Brawl where they were actually really close collaborators and I think that Hideo Kojima really loved the idea of being very closely involved in Smash Bros. and even getting a hand in that animation department and getting the details of Snake just right. Now, building upon that, people have been thinking what if they work together in the future tense? So it's not just Konami that now hold Snake as a character, but what if Sakurai continues to work with Hideo Kojima and they continue to have content in Smash Brothers? Well, this leak or supposed leak talks about that and I thought it was very funny, so I really wanted to discuss it with you guys. 
This is from Anonymous saying Super Smash Ultimate potential DLC information. He says, been giving an image from a source can't disclose unfortunately, according to them, the screenshot might allude to content to be expected in Challenger Pack 6. Not unprecedented, giving reason for Snake's inclusion in Brawl. And then it just shows a screenshot of the stage selection screen, and it shows all of the stages up until the monastery that we just got with Byleth, and it shows the UCA stage from Death Stranding. And for those of you familiar with Death Stranding, that is of course the United Cities of America, which is the basic grand map of that game where you travel through and you do these big journeys and deliver these things. Well, I think it is interesting to think about that because in terms of the audience of these games, it doesn't really fit, you know, a very big story driven mature game that is, you know, based on these celebrities playing characters instead of there just being characters. And we don't really have a character based on a celebrity in Smash Brothers yet. Um, it feels like we might not get that in terms of rights and stuff like that. And I feel fellow YouTubers have also brought up, you know, what if a controversial topic happens with one of these actors in one point or another and what if the content will be forever in Smash and you could get to play as that actor but maybe throughout the years that actor has proven to be you know very divisive and I don't think that Nintendo will go for that um, so the idea here is to have Norman Reedus the actor that plays the character the lead character in Death Stranding to be in Smash Brothers I don't believe it at all I do like the look of Death Stranding and actually seeing this in the character select screen is fun and is pretty creative in its own right but I don't think that it will happen I hope that Hideo Kojima and Sakurai will get to work together in some form, in some way, and maybe even the other way around. Maybe there's going to be some sort of Kirby or Kid Icarus content in a Hideo Kojima game as sort of a little Easter egg. I think that that is a lot more likely than the other way around. So I'm really curious what you guys think of this, especially Sabi's new thoughts on Wonderful 101. And now, of course, do you want Death Stranding content in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? So I'd love to hear what you guys think of this. If you comment down below, you could be featured and read out loud in our next video. And today's comment question is, what would be your favorite port? So which port do you really want to come to Nintendo Switch? And as for a previous comment question winner, our answer comes to us from our own user, the Widger Burr, saying, before Banjo's edition, Steve made me nervous because I figured it would be one or the other. Now with six more on the way, bring on Steve. With the love, care, and attention to detail Sakurai pours into every fighter, the animations alone will be worth the price of admission. And I think Widgerber here, yeah, hits the nail directly on the head. I think that the idea of Sakurai working with these different IP and these different people to bring characters to life has not yet disappointed us in any way. It looks amazing. The animation department in the Smash team is top notch. Look at Banjo's animation. Even look at stuff like Terry or Hero. There's so much life put into very specific humanoid characters and cartoony characters like Banjo, they can do no wrong. So to have Steve in Smash Brothers, I feel like they will do something very, very special that will not be jerky or simple or, you know, basic. I think that if Steve from Minecraft comes to Smash Brothers, it will be a very unique experience, regardless if you like or if you love the character or if you don't like the character, I think that it will be special and it will be you know, representative of the game and also open for new users, for new players that have never played Minecraft. And they'll be like, well, maybe I should try out, you know, making a few stages and having some fun in Minecraft. So I want to thank you, Widgerber, for that very positive and sweet comment. And of course, you guys, thank you so much for sending in your comments. These are always so much fun to read through. And of course, a big shout out to everyone donating to our super chats and our Patreon supporters. You make block content possible. If you want to have yourself created in pixel art or join us for a live chat or even have your own ideas become animations, go to patreon.com slash blocked content because there's a bunch of incredible rewards there and they're waiting just for you. And remember, if you're not yet a member of the blocked content family yet, subscribe now, smash that like button and ring the bell for notifications and all the news and fun that you care about will be delivered on the daily to you. Thank you guys so much for watching again and I'll see you around the corner where there's always more blocked content. See ya.